Can you see now my screen, guys? Yes, Miss. Okay. Yes, Miss. For this week, in the event that you will be out for the disconnection of your Wi-Fi, just take note of your assignment. This is called Gamify, so you need to look for an online app or site that you can use for your class, either in PE or general education. And get ready to share this next meeting and how to use it. But your submission will just be a screenshot or include the link as well. Write what are the pros and the cons of using that application or website that you've chosen. No video needed. Just submit in the Google Classroom Drive. Submission date until October 18, 2020. Okay? So let's begin. For this morning, for this afternoon rather, we will not be playing some plants. Now who among you are familiar with this link or this icon? Ako miss. Me. Ako miss. Oh, diba? You like playing with Kala this. I miss. <laughs> so welcome for our presentation. It's entitled Teaching Visuals and Symbols. So symbols are very important. They convey meaning. As they say, a picture paints a thousand words, right? So we can somehow summarize our direct experiences according to Edgar Dale into these experiences that will be more enriched indirectly with these symbols. Now, a little picture can stand a lot. I have some questions for you. What instructional material fall in this category? What, what are those visual symbols that you can remember from your teachers? Can you chat your answers? What are those instructional materials that you can consider as a good visual symbols from your teachers? Where can you integrate these processes? Thus, PE needs visual symbol. In math, do we have some special symbols being used? In science, or how about in social studies? Okay, comment your answers. So visual symbols are actually representation of the direct reality that we can see so which comes in any form it can be a sign or it can also be a symbol now our teachers would usually ask you guys to read for example a long paragraph but it will be more meaningful if it's in a form of maybe a graph or it can be some pictures or maybe it was already been summarized we have several visual symbols that we can see here. According to American education educator, he mentioned that we are made of a lot of contribution with the audio, the visual, and everything that we can see in the visual instruction. So as a teacher, it's very important that you give some sketch, either freehand sketch or pictures in your lesson. So we will focus more on the seven types of the visual symbols miss why are you presenting some scary objects so so that you would be activated so you'd remember some locations in your memory that we are actually using these things okay so what we have here first we'll talk about drawing cartoons we also have strip drawings diagrams charts maps and also the graphs first drawing who among you here are artists who loves to draw do we have jk miss yes jk is like um an illustrator so first we have drawings drawings helps in illustrating our lecture through a freehand sketching by use of chalk or a marker they may not be the real thing, but it can give a concrete visual aid. So sometimes it's good that you will provide a drawing that can be real 
to the drawing itself. And you should be very careful. Okay, what if in draw ni mo, ana ang child, ala dili man na siya apple teacher, di man na siya cat teacher. So one essential skill that a teacher should possess in order to be understood is she should know how to draw. Just like this, it can be a stick drawing. So if it helps you a lot in like a freehand drawing, then good for you. But if dili gani ka kamomo drawing, better choose some pictures, better use some um, illustrations or images that can be vivid. So you guys start learning how to draw, especially in the sketching or maybe stick drawing. There's nothing too difficult that made it more easier when you spend time in drawing. So in drawing also, there's the new thing that digital sketching or digital drawing where the materials are very expensive like the stylus and all those um, tablets. Next one, we can also use some cartoons. They are very useful, especially you don't need too much caption. The image itself, they convey meaning. They can be a springboard to a discussion or a lesson of the teacher. So this is very novel whenever you present some cartoon, cartoons just like what I have used here. It's like metaphoric for you for those who are really engaged in some images. So it depends also to the teacher if she's such artist and if she has more time to embed some pictures, cartoons in her PowerPoint. But some also, they don't put too much emphasis on giving some, some of those symbolisms. So we can have some caricatures just like the following. So there are many sources of cartoons. It can be on Google or Google Images. It can also be some cartoons that you will be creating or you can project inside your classrooms or inside your lesson. Another one is we have strip drawing. So what are those strip drawings? Any idea, guys? So strip drawings are commonly called as comics or comic strips. So according to John Dale, he mentioned that it asserts the more accurate term in the strip drawings. He make use of this one as an educational and entertaining. So here's quite an example. Why do you waste time reading books? Because reading increases my knowledge and knowledge is power. But power corrupts. The corruption is a crime. So, so on and so forth. So, with this one, there's a story. Since human beings are made of stories, you can use strip drawing inside your classroom. You can also create your own stories or there's a site where you will be creating your own cartoons. Now, another one is we have diagrams. So, diagrams are any line drawing that shows arrangement and relationships of the part of the whole. Relatively, it gives values. It shows origin and development of such chronological order. So what happens to this one for the diagram? If you can draw some stick figures, it can be helpful to you as long as you put some emphasis on the color, especially also in the presentation. So these are the examples of diagram. So first, we have the affinity diagram. So we can use this one as a cluster or, okay, give me a moment. Sige, we have Mary. Wait, let me just allow her to join in. Oh, where is she? Okay, let's continue. So first diagram is called affinity diagram again. So we usually have this one in the clustering or we use some unrelated data and give them some meaning. So can you tell me which subject uses this affinity diagram? You usually have this one in science or in your, maybe in your prof ed three or maybe in other subjects that you have as well. 
next one is we have the tree diagram. So we use this chart to increase the details of the various tasks being accomplished or you wanted to complete in a project. We also use this one to achieve a specific objective. So we, there is also a site where we can use the online way to do the tree diagram. Fishbone, on the other hand, is the use of the cause and effect. So usually we can draw this one and we use a lot of this element in English. So it is called fishbone diagram because aside from it is a cause and effect diagram, it structures the brain to branch out some of the ideas, some of the problems, and to analyze the related concepts that you have. Diba, you're familiar with this one? Fishbone diagram. Next, we also have some charts. So a lot of charts that we can use is as a representation for relationship with, within organizations. So there, there are different types of charts that we can see. First is that there's a specific contrast between what is a diagram and a chart. But nonetheless, we use them in our educational system or strategy. So first, we have the time chart. What subject uses time chart? Science. science, miss. Okay, we have science. We also have the social studies for the tabular time, representation, and the sequence and the order, the chronological order. We can also have social science pertaining to the historical events in that place. Another one is tree or stream chart. So it depicts the development or the growth or the change of the simple course which spreads out into different branches. So the tree or stream charts also helps us in the beginning of the contributions of this particular um, tributaries or how they con converge this single concept into many concepts. So usually we can see this one in the science. Next, flow chart gives us the visual way on how processes or how activities would happen. So what we can have with a flow chart, we can use this one in PE as well. English. But English, correct. So flow like chart. Like a story. True, Raul. So flow of the story, it can also be, um, can also be the process. What happens maybe for a TLE or cooking, what are those basic activities or basic um, steps in making a particular invention or in your tech book? Another famous chart is the organizational charts, which shows one part of the organization or refers to the other parts of the big organization. So we have here the organizational charts where we usually see along the bulletin boards or where we have the entral, entrance part in our school or university. So our organizational charts. Another strategy that you can use is comparison and contrast charts, where it shows the differences or the similarities. The example for people, places, it can also be with events, ideas. So in the frame, you can see what are those basic concepts between whale and a fish so you start to compare or you allow to let your students discover how they are different so this type of chart is called the pareto chart or sometimes we just see this one as not prioritized in our like in the billboard or in the statistics but this is actually called the pareto chart so this is a type of bar chart which prioritize in the descending order, so increasing order or the magnitude from left to right. It also shows the factors that are occurring, why certain results would um, be presented. So Pareto chart. Next one is the graph. So graphs are important because they are pictures that would help us understand the data. So in the K-12 curriculum, we actually 
have some appropriate lessons that we can embed for the usage of the graphs and the charts. So it's included in the MELC or the most essential learning competencies. So these are examples of graphs. We have the circle or the pie graph, bar graph, pictorial graph, line graph, histograph, scatter plot for special education. So this one is what we call, what do you call this one, guys? Pie graph. Correct. Right. This one is called pie graph. You are exposed with this one from your teachers, from even from elementary, we had this pie graph. It's very important to understand and how it is being used. How about this type of graph? Bar graph, man. Correct. This one is called the bar graph. So bar graph are also important whenever we give some recommendations of comparing the magnitude of similar items or seeing the relatives of sizes from the parts to its whole. Bar graph. How about this one? Pictograph. 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 Correct. This one is called pictorial graph or picture graph. They use pictures. So this one is basically exposed to young children where it makes use of more picture symbols. How about this? Graphic organizers. So we use graphic organizers as representation of some visuals, concepts. So historically, they're organized to make the graphic organizer a best, one of the best teaching principle that we can use in our classroom. And it's also informational and more or less the teaching strategies that we have is actually patterned to this graphic organizers. Or if you go back to our Prof. Ed 3, it's what we call as the metacognitive log in connecting the graphic organizers and branching them out to a different lessons that you can create in your memory or in your brain patterns. So our brain, if the longer, for example, diba in graphic organizers, or how are you able to retrieve those informations that you know the names of these items? So when you were still ele in elementary, your teachers already expose you with these concepts, with these kind of strategies. Today, when we try to re retrieve them, there is a strong connection whenever they are exposed. Same also with those information that you have. If you create more connection, if you create more studies, or if that connection is being revisited, it will be strengthened. And time to time, the long-term memory for that retrieval of information will be easier. Another way to help your class be more engaged is the usage of maps. So maps are representation of a surface of the earth, or it can be an area, and it has four major direction and another four secondary direction. What are those four directions in maps? North. Uh, oh, so north, south, east, west. Correct. North, north, north south, south, east, east west. west. And the secondary direction? The uh, combination of Yes. Um, east, north, uh, east. South, east, north, east, south, west. And Very good. But don't you know that there are different kinds of maps? First is the physical map, which we are very much exposed. It combines the single projection of the data, such as the altitude, the temperature, the rainfall, the precipitation, the vegetation, and the soil of that particular country, just like what you can see here on the screen. So stars, it, which indicate the capital city. At the same time, the color, it embeds the particular weather, or you can just see the legend from the maps that you will be using inside your classroom. We also have relief maps. So what are these relief maps? They're actually three-dimensional representation that shows some couture of the physical data or the Earth of the planet um, Earth. So what we usually have this one is they are somehow edited reality of the 
Earth. You can see this one either under Google Maps, sometimes they have that one, or there are also sites that you will revisit later on where we can navigate and imagine that we are going to this museum or to this countries, even if we're just doing it online. Next, commercial maps. So these are used by the businesses or those who are having some projection on product or industry. So they show the land areas and the relationship to the economy. So which particular area has more structures, infrastructures, or companies, they would benchmark on those places. Political map, on the other hand, gives detailed information about the roads, the towns, the highways, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, and so on. This time in Cebu, we're actually excited for the Cordova um, connection or the bridge. In the Philippines, what is the longest bridge for this time? Who's the running record? It's the San Juanico Bridge. But don't you know that there's a bridge being uh, being put into a project this time that can get the crown from San Juanico Bridge? Do you have any idea where it is? No, miss. <laughs> okay. It's actually in Mindanao. They're trying to connect... Um, islands this time so that it will have the newest crown for the longest bridge in the Philippines. That is why San Juanico Bridge also are trying to level up its aesthetics. If you can check on news, it is actually beautifying putting out some lights that it can change from um, colors or thematic lights to make San Juanico Bridge still a, a spot for tourists and at the same time they it will still be the clamor for the the wonderful bridge in the philippines as they can say picture is worth a thousand words as you can also see here pictures visual symbols are just in our fingertips but always remember picture should be the best visual aid whenever you present whenever you project to your students Okay, so maps and symbols are important. Now, colors also of the map are important. They speak the map language. They represent the highways. It represents also the culture of why these physical features are being shown. But be careful that with the geographic grids of the map, it's entirely the what do we call the geographic different lines in the map? Can you remember in social studies? The north, north to south north. pole. I ko an miss kan ang longitude. Longitude and latitude, miss. I, correct. So the north to south pole is called meridian. Or it can also be, yes, it's the meridian. And the longest one is the longitude longitude and the degrees can also be you are correct latitude and the center is the meridian so the parallel lines why did you still remember it raul maybe you had a good uh learning experience during learning this latitude and longitude yeah, yes, miss, kay ka nang ang amuang ko na to pag elementary, miss, kay ka nang gipa locate jun, miss, sa globe, miss, like na jun, miss, ka nang globe in front, like, murag sa amuang atubangan, gi, miss, ba mo nang ang learning, miss, kay ka nang concrete. Yes, that's correct. So, we have the map reading test when we were still in elementary. So, we have a lot of these activities and sometimes, if wrong imong pagka-connect sa mga degrees, you will land into a different country. Now, this time around, it's very important that we understand these things and the concepts that we have. Now, questions so far before I can transfer to the next slide? None, me. None so far. Okay, Pata? Okay, Pamela. Laban. Okay, let me just go to my next slide. A moment. <laughs> 